Hello and welcome to another video from Double Rail. And this video is another 15 minutes of modeling video. And uh, today is Sunday, November 17th, uh, 2019. And uh, what we're doing today is we're going to go and fix uh, this uh, solder joint on this uh, set of points. Now, I soldered these fish plates in place because this was one of uh, two track problems I had with this curve. And uh, this fish plate was you know, part of the issue, so I went and uh, it was a little bullheaded uh, with the soldering. And so um, one of the problems that I have is depending on the bit of rolling stock, when it goes over this, so this one's okay, but some of them will hit um, these solder joints, um, either usually with the inside of the flange, and so what will happen is if I put any kind of pressure on that, it's going to hit it. So anything with slightly deeper flanges or any kind of weight is going to clip that, and it doesn't doesn't derail anything but it makes an annoying noise and I sometimes I see some stuff um, rise up off the track a little bit uh, so it annoys me so I'm gonna go ahead and, and fix this and um, I also have a small wall project and um, that I'll introduce you to in a moment and um, you'll see what's going on there as well um, now this video does has come out a little bit later than normal and that's because uh, today my kids had some ice hockey games and I had to get up real early uh, for those so there's no real time uh, to do uh, any modeling today until uh, later in the evening and obviously with the time zones difference with the UK uh, you may not see this until until Monday um, it, it'll be filmed today and it'll be uploaded today but uh, by the time it gets uploaded a lot of folks in the UK will be asleep so I do apologize for that but like I said it's all about trying to find that 15 minutes or so every day uh, on your schedule just to, to get it. So sometimes that will be in the morning and sometimes that might not be until late at night. But like I said, it's almost important to just uh, set aside the time and work on something regardless of, of what it is, whether it's just putting down some track, whether it's cleaning a loco or whatever, just, just get some small tasks done so you feel like you've uh, kind of progressed a little bit. So um, now I think it would be kind of cool if other folks uh, did this as well. So if you've got a YouTube channel and you want to join in on this uh, 15 minutes uh, a day uh, sort of uh, process, you know, feel free to uh, dump your channel link in the comments below and I'll take a look and I'll mention it and start mentioning things um, maybe later in the week or so once folks get a chance to do that. All right, so let me go show you the wall project and then we'll get started on this. Okay, so we're over at the uh, part of the layout that's uh, called Brewery Road. And um, if you, you've probably seen this uh, part of the layout before, it used to have a um, sort of uh, Metcalf um, brewery building that was here. I've decided to do away with that. It, this also had the uh, 1930s, 1950s um, low relief factory from Scale Mall Sceneries. Unfortunately, um, Scale Model Scenery's uh, lower relief factory got a little bent. I think the way it was designed, um, there wasn't enough supports in the center of it. So over the last couple of years, it kind of bowed uh, due to the, the temperatures going up and down here. And we don't, we have a pretty good temperature swing, um, but it doesn't really get that humid down here. So I'm not quite sure why it bowed. I just think where it was glued in place, it sort of just didn't really have enough uh, support in the center of the building. So you could easily fix that. Uh, I decided just to do away with it and uh, to do something different. So um, you can see here too, I pulled out some of the, um, root of some of the walling. Um, there's, there used to be um, some printed uh, scratch built walls that I did using a uh, scale scenes uh, brickwork. Now I'm still gonna use the scale scenes brickwork, but I'm gonna use it on um, 3D printed uh, material. So I'm gonna print out the uh, the texture sheets and then glue them to the 3D printed um, wall rather than uh, trying to scratch build the wall of card. And it had the same kind of similar problems. It just wasn't thick enough and wasn't um, supported enough. Uh, so it kind of bowed over time. So uh, the other thing I have here, this is a tree that I scratch built. Uh, just some uh, Woodland Scenics uh, foliage and then we have an actual uh, tree branch it's like a twig I found out in the yard and I cut it and glued it to make it uh, more tree like and then uh, attached the uh, foliage to it um, so what I want to do is I obviously my scene here doesn't blend well with the back scene 
Uh, so I got this low relief house over here, and we got the the sort of um, wooden uh, fencing here. And so what I want to do is uh, put something in the background here uh, to sort of mask uh, the difference uh, between the two. Uh, it's too close to basically blend that scene in. So what I did was I 3D printed a simple wall that's going to go and basically uh, fit in there like so. And so uh, obviously uh, this is just a, a flat piece of plastic that wants to fall over. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to paint the top part here and then we're going to uh, cut out and uh, glue uh, the bottom part to it. Now I think I'll, I might try to just cut and glue uh, the wall straight to it and then be very careful about painting the top part. And um, assuming that works and I can dry it, then the eye and it dries, um, I'm going to basically stick this in place and then the idea is uh, I've got these little trees uh, that I got as part of a, a kit, I think it's a, a Finnish company maybe um, that does it, um, but they look pretty decent so I think what I can do is sort of stand them up like this in the scene, obviously I'm going to have to glue them in, but um, basically get them to stand in the scene like that and it'll look like you know the trees are kind of growing up as behind in front of the wall and so on and I can uh, maybe add a little bit of uh, woodland scenic stuff to them to make them a little less um, fake looking um, but they're not too bad and they come in various different sizes and I think injecting into the foliage like this um, they'll make a pretty good uh, scene scenic break with that all right so what I'm going to do is we're going to go uh, solder that track and, and fix that problem and then we're going to go and uh, glue the paper to the wall and uh, the texture sheet to the wall and we'll go in and paint the wall and then we'll we'll be done for the day and then uh, later in the week we'll finish the scene by adding these trees to it. Alright let's get working on that. Alright so hopefully uh, you guys are going to enjoy the wall project as well. So um, I've got a soldering iron that's uh, part connected to my uh, SM or SMT station below and uh, the cool thing is is uh, this particular joint just happens to be within a couple of feet of where the soldering iron system is actually set up uh, so I don't have to go and drag extension cords or figure out a way to get it uh, here it's already here so I um, also wanted to dedicate this video uh, to uh, Dave over at Cotsmore uh, I'm going to show you Dave uh, how not to use the soldering iron like a branding iron uh, so of course that's funny coming from me who's you know welded blobs on here but anyway so what we're going to do is uh, just melt the solder down. So we're going to take the uh, soldering iron and we're going to touch it up against the um, solder joint here and hopefully enough just to melt it and it'll just flow out of the way. But if not, we can take the solder sucker and remove the solder completely. I'm hoping though that the tip is going to get hot enough. Um, it's currently at about 307 degrees. Uh, centigrade that it will start to melt. Oh, I've got the timer. Alexa, set a uh, 14 minute and 30 second timer. 14 minutes and 30 seconds, starting now. Might not be totally accurate, but hey. So you can see there it's starting to melt away slowly. I don't think the other joints are causing any problems. You know that. So I'm using this uh, tip cleaner. You just basically wipe it off like so. Um, but I just want to make sure that you know, this other solder too is causing problems. There you can 
can see it's now starting to liquefy and we can just get it away from the rail completely. Now you have two options here, you can uh, use a solder sucker to sort of remove the solder and then just redo it, um, but I'm going to see if I can just get away with um, heating the solder up and then just using the soldering iron to um, redistribute the solder so that it no longer is disrupting the inside of the rail here. Now I know this piece here is causing me problems, I'm probably going to have to get the solder sucker, but we'll see. There you go, this solder is quite old, I think it's been a while since I put this on here. Um, now I should have soldered this from underneath, but unfortunately when I uh, did this, the track was already in place. Yeah, there's far too much solder on here to replace this, but I have to use the solder sucker and make sure that there's none on the inside I don't think I did no. so it looks like it's just this piece here that's going to cause us problems and this piece here so I'm going to go get the solder sucker and uh, just remove it and then uh, redo it okay I have found the solder sucker and I have paused the timer so Alexa how much time is left on the timer you have 11 minutes left on your 14 minutes and 30 seconds timer, but it's currently paused. Alexa, resume timer. Timer resumes with about 11 minutes left. Okay, so we're going to heat this up. Push this down and then we just put it over the solder like so. And, and likewise, we're going to do the same thing over here. Now, I've just pushed down on it. Wait for it to liquefy. That smells gnarly. It's been in there a while. All right. It's looking a lot better. I don't even think I'm gonna need to add solar to it. I think this is more of a gnarly problem. So this piece here, I don't think it's gonna cause any problems because it's on the outside, but it could probably be reduced a little. Alright, so you can see there what we've done is uh, just cleaned up the inside on the outside of it so that there really isn't anything hitting 
the real flanges, hopefully, anymore. So, next thing I'm going to do is just clean off the tip here. And then what we're going to do is just do a quick test um, with a similar wagon that I have before. And I can feel now there's no real well. There's still a bit of a, a dip there from the actual track, but I think that's from the track, not from the solar joint. So I think we're we're good there. Alright. So now I'm looking at that and going, I want to fix that dip though. That's going to be, I think, a Dremel tool job. We'll just file that down with the Dremel tool. Um, so yeah, we won't worry about that for now. But I think it should. That's a bit of a dramatic bump though, right? That's what part of a problem. All right. So we'll we'll fix that in an upcoming video, I think, with the with the Dremel tool. But for now, I'm going to uh, head back to the wall, and we'll we'll do some. Timer resumed with about six minutes and fifty seconds left. All right, so we got about six minutes and fifty seconds uh, to take care of this. So as I saw, I showed you earlier. Um, basically, what we're going to do is this is a three D printed wall. It's pretty simple. It's got a little slightly um, inclined uh, top to it. And so what we're going to do is we're basically going to paint the top and then um, we're going to glue a texture sheet to it. So the texture sheet we're using is from uh, scalescenes.com uh, and these guys have fantastic textures. And it's basically a sheet you just print out on your laser printer or inkjet printer. And this one's dark brown brick uh, TX24. Now I've started a layout a long time ago, uh, probably around 2011 or so. So um, this particular texture sheet I used quite a lot. And so I'm going to use it again, and I'm going to use some spray adhesive to stick it to the 3D printed part, and a scissors. So, first step, we're going to go and just uh, simply cut it out. And um, so I don't need uh, this part of the texture, so I'm just going to use that as a guide uh, to cut it out. Now, I probably wouldn't do it this way if I wasn't trying to do it in 15 minutes. Um, I would probably paint it first uh, so that the paint doesn't get on the texture sheet. And then I would go ahead and glue the texture sheet to it after it had painted. However, I want to get this done today as much as possible and put it on the layout and finish the scene sometime later this week after it's dried. So I'm going to just go ahead and risk it. Um, so you may not want to do this. I also might have tried to use a guillotine to cut this straight, um, but it doesn't really matter. It's going to be hidden in behind the tree and some other foliage, so if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. And if you're a child watching this, this is why you pay attention at school when you're doing arts and crafts, uh, so that you later in life want to cut something out, you can do it straight. Or, yeah, it's not too bad. So also a chance my laser printer didn't print this out straight, but I'm going with it's probably my cutting skills. So I'm not going to cut out the whole thing on the bottom here because, uh, again, I'm pressed for time, but I'm also going to um, simply wrap it around. So you may have seen me use this technique before. Um, basically what you do is you um, line it up like so with the um, lip on the actual 3D print. Um, and with this... I'm going to go in and wrap it around the um, back of it as well, just a little bit. So once it's lined up uh, flush against the edge on the top, you flatten it out and you find the bottom edge and you just make sure that it's almost like a rubbing. And you sort of this, you don't want it to bend, right? So you don't want it to generate bubbles, um, right? Like the air bubbles are if you do it. So you just sort of use the edge of the 3D print to sort of achieve a fold and then likewise you just do it again all the way through I hope you guys can see this on the camera yeah like so and then what you do is you have fold marks on the print here and it doesn't really matter 
if it's totally straight or not because you're just going to fold it along the back anyway. So I'm going to cut this a little faster than I should, but remember it's definitely not straight. I'll tell you that. Also, it doesn't totally matter. So make sure you do it the right way. And so I have this overlapping just a little bit and that looks good. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, overlap down the side. So you kind of just flatten it out a little bit so it doesn't get any kind of crease marks in it or you don't want it. And you just fold it down the back so you can see there, it's kind of overlapping and so on. So now I've got another mark. And again, I'm just going to roughly cut it since that's behind the wall. If this was something where I'd see both sides, I would obviously be a lot more careful with that. Um, all right, so it looks like we've got a, a good fold there. And so what we're gonna do next is uh, just line it up a little bit and we're gonna use a spray paint. So I'm gonna use the rest of the texture paper here just to protect my workspace from you know getting spray painted or spray adhesive on it. Um, now the instructions for this tell me it's flammable and I shouldn't put it in my eyes and um, it should be, I think, six to eight inches away. <coughs> so yeah, if you were waiting on uh, double O rail videos, I apologize, not too many in October, uh, I had a pretty bad um, case of bronchitis and so that um, kind of put a dampener on videos because every time I spoke I basically coughed and, uh, and I've glued my fingers. Um, so anyway, definitely don't inhale this. Um, you don't need a lot, just a little, little bit like that. And it will get on everything and it's super sticky. So uh, my arm will now attest to. Um, but basically what you do is you line it up using the bits that you've uh, lined up and do that with it. And then you're going to need to also have sprayed the bottom of it. So here we're lucky that it's um, you know, protected my workspace quite a bit. Um, and hopefully this will fold over. Now usually what I'll do is take scissors and cut the corner. Well, I really glued my arm. That's fine. I was trying to clean the nozzle out and I sprayed myself. Which is great. All right, so now I'm gonna take this bit again. All right, so what I'm gonna try to do is basically just get this in here as much as possible. So I'm gonna spray the paper part of it okay, like so. You don't wanna spray the paper too much because it'll get wet and then the paint will run, or the ink will run, and then it's, um, it's kind of game over at that point. Um, as you can see here, you just want to press it down. You will have to clean your hands after this. We're going to paint stuff anyway, so it shouldn't matter too much. And likewise, like so. Now, I would um, leave it sit like this for just a couple of moments before print painting, because if I flick this over right now, it's going to stick to the... Um, going to stick to the table which obviously we don't want that to happen okay so I just want to show you a quick trick uh, we did get some spray glue where we didn't want it uh, so we're just going to use some rubbing alcohol and a uh, some kitchen towel and you can use as long as this is PLA or PETG you should be able to use um, rubbing alcohol on the 3d printed part so it won't be a problem. Um, I've got another uh, disposable paintbrush and we're using aged concrete from uh, Model Master. Uh, you can use something from you know, uh, Rail Match or from um, you know Humbrol or something like that. Um, I'm using this because it's worked really well for me um, for a couple of different projects including uh, several Model Rally projects. Um, so I think it'll work out pretty well. Um, so one thing I've got to be really careful of is make sure I don't get it on the um, brickwork because then it'll just kind of look a bit funny. And if I do get it on the brickwork, um, I will be able to possibly uh, use some weathering powders or something like that to 
uh, mask it. Uh, now, it's interesting, the spray adhesive has created a bit of a weird texture on this, uh, so I think it's gonna actually add uh, to the kind of concrete look uh, once it's done. I don't need to paint both sides, but I am gonna paint um, as much of it as possible, uh, just so that if I get some weird angle or something like that when I'm filming um, later, uh, it won't look bad. Now I've already got a little bit on the paper, which is, like I said, one of the reasons why I probably wouldn't have done it this way. Um, I'm not going to try to wipe it off because I think if I wipe it off, it's going to make it worse. Uh, so I think some weathering powders or maybe even uh, some foliage or something like that in an upcoming video um, will make it a lot easier. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to be working on uh, the track project again. I want to get that finished if possible um, because I really need to get the layout um, back up and running so I can do some other videos. And uh, we also have the um, Christmas uh, advent calendar videos coming up. We do those every year and I think a lot of people like those. So those are coming up. And this time I'm actually print. I'm actually doing those advent calendar videos in November rather than trying to do them the same day uh, which you know life gets in the way and then uh, they get delayed or something like that so uh, this year they're going to be out and scheduled um, probably before December 1st um, so they'll pop up every day um, probably around seven o'clock in the morning uh, UK time I think is what I'll aim for all right so that's the Alexa timer beeping on me so my 15 minutes are up um, now I've edit Alexa, cancel timer. I've edited some of these videos um, this week, uh, the first two, and then um, and I'll, I'll probably continue to edit the videos so that um, it's you know a little bit interesting. So um, you may find some of the videos with the intro at the start are not 15 minutes. It just means that there's basically been 15 minutes of modeling, not that the video length is going to be 15 minutes. Uh, I just wanted to make that clear. A couple of people had asked me about that yesterday. Um, but yeah, so basically the idea is that the modeling time in the video, my modeling time, is uh, going to be 15 minutes or so. And you know, if I go two minutes over or if I have to pause the timer or something because I forgot where I did with the Dremel tool, um, you know, it, it's going to happen. It's not going to be exact. Uh, the idea with this uh, series of videos is to basically show you guys... Um, what I've been doing, uh, make me uh, sort of do some kind of modeling project and that's not like 3D printing related, um, as I'm printing, painting a 3D printing project, but you know, just sort of uh, to encourage myself to go in and get some of the layout finished. So I'm going to um, set this aside, um, I've got this little 3D printed um, hat holder there so it can dry and um, I'll continue this part of the project in a few days uh, when the track project is finished. All right, well, I'm gonna go clean up and uh, try to get the rest of that adhesive off my arm and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time.